Okay. So then the unsupervised, the, the big difference here is that it trains from unlabeled data. And if you look at blockchain, we have a ton of unlabeled data. Um, and what it, you can then do is you, you can use that for clustering or, or making anomaly predictions. So basically if you have, um, so if you cluster, let's say transactions into a set of clusters, and now there's a new transaction that comes in that doesn't get assigned to any of these clusters. It's kind of an outlier. You could say, oh, this is an anomalous transaction. And this can happen in a spatial dimension. Um, so for instance, let's, let's uh, assume kind of like a smart contract again. You could look at um, you know, size, you could look at date, you could look at number of transactions that the smart contract has received. Um, you could look at properties of the deployer, right? And so now that is your data set and you basically uh, learn what are kind of common properties of all the smart contracts being created. And then again, you kind of have that outlier that you're able to predict. So that's kind of the spatial dimension, or you could have a time dimension. So think of kind of like a time series anomaly detection where um, you know every time period, let's say every hour, you determine, let's say a price of a token, you build kind of time series that will encode things like seasonality and uh, volatility. And then based on kind of the historical data, you are able to make a prediction of what the next um, price should be in, what range the next price should be in. And if it breaks out of that range, you could say, oh, this is anomalous. Um, how to create a, an unsupervised um, uh, machine learn, learning model? You create, again, kind of a rich normalized set of features and very similar to the supervised one. Uh, and then you uh, choose an algorithm based on whether you want to carve it spatially or time-based. And uh, for spatial, isolation force is a great algorithm. And for time-based, uh, time series anomaly detection. And one thing just to, to note on the side here is uh, Porta bots can be created in JavaScript and TypeScript and Python. Um, the language of data science is, is Python. And so, um, if you're venturing into this direction, I highly recommend that you uh, develop your bots in Python because then you have a rich set of libraries um, available out of the box. A time series anomaly detection, for instance, there's the profit library that was created by Facebook, which works great. There's, there's really not much kind of data science work that you need, need to do there. Um, it, 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 produces a decent model out of the box. Um, and then similar, uh, you build and update the model. Um, you can first kind of do it offline, but um, these anomaly uh, detection models work based if they kind of get updated over time. And so uh, the, the models, the anomaly detection models that have shipped on uh, in bots on Forda, they actually build and update the model inside the bot. Um, so again, if you think about kind of time series, right, the price changes, it's volatile, um, but over time that could change for a particular token, right? And so if you update it inside the model, then you don't have to worry about uh, much drift. But um, the challenge that you will run into is that there is a cold start problem. So the first time the bot gets deployed, it does not have any data to... Um, to make it to reason on or, or to, to build a model on. So, so a bot may need to run, let's say a week before it has sufficient data for an anomaly detection model. And so then it is able to make predictions, you know, after that week, but the first week it's kind of going to be blind. Um, I don't think it's a big issue on the Forda network uh, because bots are being deployed on several nodes at the same time. And so let's assume you know, it's deployed onto six nodes. Uh, and now you have one bot that gets redeployed to a different node. Well, you still have five bots that are running that, that are already 
trained and operating while the new bot uh, or the bot on the new node will kind of build out its data for a week before it essentially becomes active. So that, that's just something to, to keep in mind. Um, the other uh, downside is that a um, anomaly does not necessarily mean malicious. Um, and, um, you know, you'll, you'll encounter that all the time. There's just a lot of odd stuff out there that is not necessarily malicious. And in order to overcome that is to um, model your detection logic consistent with attacker behavior. And, you know, we talked about kind of the various attack stages um, a few weeks ago, right? An attack usually goes through funding, preparation, exploitation, and money laundering. And so now think about an, an anomaly bot on each of those stages, right? Hey, for an EOA, the funding is kind of weird. Preparation is kind of weird. Exploitation is weird. And if you kind of see weird anomalous events along these attack stages for a particular EOA or contract, that now is behavior that is consistent with attacker behavior. And that allows you to convert an anomalous set of data points into a malicious classification. And that's essentially how the combiner works uh, today. 